And President Bola Tinobu has applauded the judgment of Judge Robin Knowles of the Business and Property Court in London for awarding a landmark victory to the federal government of Nigeria over a firm known as Process and Industry Development P&ID Limited. Judge Knowles, uh, Knowles dismissed the $11.5 billion value of the award and accumulated interest previously won by P&ID over a failed 2010 deal to allegedly build a gas processing plant on the grounds that the award was obtained by fraud. President Tinubu commended the UK court for prioritizing the merits of the case above all other considerations. The arbitral award had over the years placed the assets of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and those of its agencies all over the world at the risk of attachment, erosion of foreign reserves, and distortion of monetary, physical, and other policies of government with attendant dire consequences for Nigeria and its people. These emphasized the need for the FRN to vigorously challenge and resist the enforcement of the award by P and ID. The High Court has today ruled that the Federal Republic of Nigeria's challenge to the arbitra arbitration award granted against it to an obscure hedge fund backed BVI shell entity, Process and Industrial Development Limited, in 2017 has been successful. Joining us on the news at seven is a legal practitioner who specializes in international law, Akintayo Iwilade, to further discuss the judgment. Thank you for joining us on TVC News at 7. Let's begin with your reaction to this judgment. The court ruled that both the contract and the arbitration were procured by fraud. Yeah, uh, good evening and thank you for having me on the, on the news tonight. Well, the, what reaction, what more of a reaction can I have as a Nigerian than to be excited, just like the, the, the president has also commended the, the merits uh, and the decision that has been reached that, you know, to take away this very ugly albatross and risk that was, you know, all over Nigeria's assets obtained by fraud. So, of course, the reaction is excitement. I'm happy that this, uh, this cloud is, you know, is finally off the, the neck of the country. And I'm glad that, you know, uh, justice somehow, to a significant extent, has, has prevailed and the truth has, has, has prevailed and the event along the way. But, mm -hmm. but I'm excited. I think that's, that's really my first reaction and happy to welcome right. this sort of judgment. Mm -hmm. But is this the final arbiter? Run us through what is possible in this case. What, what did you say? I, I did quite get that. I'm asking if this is the final arbiter. Does this conclude the, pro, the, the proceedings? Yeah, I mean, of, of course, they are, they are, they are, they are entitled to, to, to proceed on, on appeal. I mean, the... The, the, the obscure PNID, uh, or rather say non-existent company, can shell company, whatever it is, can proceed to, to challenge it in the upper level of the court. But the, whether that challenge will be successful, that is left to be seen. I think that over the, the years and over the, you know, the, the couple of uh, years that this has, Nigeria has taken the bold step to challenge this every step of the way, the Nigerian legal side argument, the substance of our, the, the legal team's argument, I must commend the Nigerian government, both the past and the current government, for pursuing this the logical conclusion. But the Nigerian legal side's argument have always been accepted. First, we were able to prevent the enforcement of that award in the first place. We were able to, our legal team were able to prevent that enforcement in the first place. We were able to stay enforcement. The legal team was also able to successfully establish that the basis, the cry, and the argument that all of these processes were obtained by fraud, from even the contract itself to the process of the arbitral or what everything was laid by fraud. And I'm absolutely, to, uh, absolutely, Mr. Iwiladi. All, all right. Yes. And finally, at this time, uh, the judgment was actually handed down electronically by email. Uh, why is that so? Uh, well, I think that's consistent with, <laughs> with the world we now live in, and uh, the world is getting more and more connected and, and all that. But, uh, so, so that's consistent, and that, that's also something that is growing even within our own system here in Nigeria. We are instances where proceedings are now held virtually, and it's consistent with law. Uh, regulations now accept and allow that 
But one critical thing I, I like to draw before we, we leave that, beyond that, one lesson we have to learn from this as a country is that going forward, we should, anything that would concern the sovereign authority of our country, anything that would involve the, the sovereignty of Nigeria, those sort of contracts should be made to be subject to Nigerian law. The arbitration seat, the seat of arbitration should be made to be in Nigeria. All right. And we should stop subjecting our country to having to go and be answering Very well to said. contractual liabilities and arguments in another country. Mm. You know, the, the, the arbitration, if you, have, if you want to do business in Nigeria, you want to make money in our country, then you must subject yourself to Nigerian law. You don't come Absolutely, here to Mr. Iwilade. I know you can go on and on with this. Legal practitioner, I can tell Iwilade, thank you so much for talking to us on TVC News at 7.